road. But she was one of those best people you would love to hear. Sing to pretend it is I even pray for you. One time I went to visit her and she first prayed for me. And then later I started my prayer too. So I kept wondering, should I add a prayer or with humility? And they said, from this, Neyo is available. Praise the Lord. So she cannot do it now. But Paul knew the time is coming, I must be forward. Actually, or uh, the, the Greek word I picked from there from that message was to be released. That time must come when you are no longer worried about the pricks. In my other years, I decided to go for a pastoral visit. And then as I was there, they told me we cannot run to the hospital, but this person needs to breathe their last. And they had turned the home into a hospital. So they said, talk to the family members and prepare their hearts so that we can remove, because the person is just on the machines. And I wondered what I was supposed to do there. Am I disconnecting the machine to sentence a pastor or not? And then after we prayed in that discussion and praying, then the machines came back again. I said, you see, I was going to kill somebody. That's what ran in my mind. And since that day, I began to be so careful when I'm invited to the hospital to do that last part of the pastor. Then two days later, I went to visit this old man and I asked him, how are you? He said, actually, I don't know why God is not taking me. Now, you and I could be here in death. But this man, he said, they have pricked me everywhere. I don't have the skin which is to be, the pain is too much. Every minute they are turning me around, whether children or what, everyone is seeing my nakedness, I'm fed up with this. I can imagine now the team that has been with her mother in the hospital every day, cleaning her up, prepare her, raise her up for the day. She can't do anything for herself. You don't choose who is coming actually to raise her up. Young or old, relative or not, you don't even understand. You are deprived of what you should do. And therefore, the cost of living to some people becomes actually too expensive that die. The pain sores. If, if your parent doesn't get, or your patient doesn't get bed sores, you're very lucky. But when it happens, everybody's like, okay, now what next is it sepsis? So you're all worried. And then by the time you finish taking care of a person in the, bed, in the hospital, and everybody was saying, oh, I'm not, I'm not the politician, I'm not a leader, I'm not a counselor, I'm not a, 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 a friend. So many names. This is not for smearing. I love the, the, the young man yesterday said, you people stop calling me that we came from a humble home, we came from a poor home. You didn't want to put gloves. I love that statement and I'm still thinking about it. Now, I want to tell us, brothers and sisters, there are times we try to deny facts. To deny what? But, facts or not facts of the world, that's not the truth. The truth is that you have where you came from and you must go back. How you go there, whether you are in a coffin or in a sheet or nothing or as ash, the truth is that you have gone back. Praise the Lord. And now you see each one of us struggling with so many things. Somebody told me that uh, they have fuel. Every day they must drive home to shower. Every day. So the taxpayer is paying that you are going home for luxury for four times to shower. And then we ask, can we have some medicine in the hospital? And then you say they are the medicine. Leaders just forget we have to speak this. We need to repent. Whether you're in a church, whether you're in a government, whether you're a civil servant, wherever you are, whether in the courts of law, we need to repent. And if there are civil servants, they want to tell us, stop operating like NGOs within one NGO or governments within one government. 
Somebody says, ah, that, that's the mission of heresy, don't go there. Ah, that, this is judicial. And it's, no, have your boundaries, but work together to make sure that the laws you are putting in place, the systems in the hospital you are putting in place, the public service, in every way, right from the office of the president to the dot, let us have one goalpost to make sure that we have a changing country. But when you come, if you have not mentioned where you work from, somebody just passes you. Praise the Lord. Recently, I went to check on my mother, and I wasn't in her collar. The guard told me, stop there. And I stopped. I said, then they want to go and see my patient. He said, it's not time for visiting. Without courtesy of asking, who is this person? Then I had to break back to Uganda Road and put on my collar, and then I went back. Ah, sir, you are welcome. So minus my caller, I am nothing. Ask him as a neighbor. Without your data, you something. <laughs> Having said that, I want to encourage us, and time is not on our side. Brothers and sisters, Amoti has walked her journey. She has served, she has taken care of everyone children, grandchildren, village people, church people, all of us, she has done her role. What legacy are you leaving behind? Especially the children. I want to come to the quarry and find the family open. I want to come to the quarry without reservation saying, I need to make an appointment. I want to never want an appointment. Actually, I've had issues with uh, my friend Griffin and the rest. Ah, we can organize our appointment, you come. And then when Amos sees him, he says, Where have you been? Come in a minute. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we need to reach that level when we are not worried how they find us. And some of us who have reached the level of saying, I'm going to tell you. How did, we, how did the person say it is not there? Let's open our lives to the world and be a page that everyone can read and be a physical testimony as people see us. Praise the Lord. And lastly, as we come to conclusion, and uh, Timothy is saying, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. I mean, you're not going to see his appearing when you're just like this. You need to be ready. When he says the body will be transformed, you'll be transformed. Praise the Lord. Now you can imagine, I don't know what Amot is looking at up there. She's seeing all of us into all this theater. You want to call it theater for lack of a better word. She says, look, I already left. We are struggling. Praise the Lord. Now allow me to use the word of Jesus for the sake of our mortal. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, came and some of the apostles, including the son, Jesus Set of entitlement. Anything they are just in the twenties. They want to drive the big car. You are driving. They want to have a house. You are. They want to have money. They want to have everything. And actually, they would be glad if you can hand over even what you have to them. Amot taught the children: if you go to Amot's home or anyone who is connected to Amot, you will know that this child was raised by Amot has taught them to work, has taught them to be patient, has taught them to love, has taught them to share, has taught them not to be idle, and also to appear decent. I have not seen, maybe we'll come one day, I have not seen a Amotis child or grandchild who looks different out of order. I haven't. I haven't. Her hair, a, a natural brown. And 
She was so beautiful, by the way, with her natural hair. Now some of us, we struggle, sir, going from morning to evening. With new respect, you have not a lawyer today. <laughs> Let's think about things which are serious. Things that will help us. I'm not stopping anybody from adding, you know, us men, we have also put men and women to on tension. You want them to look like this, to look like them, like that, like that. When they change, they say, where is the person I saw at first? And yet we are the ones leading them. Anyway, need not digress. Praise the Lord. So let us focus and say, what kind of legacy are we leaving behind? Let somebody have a story to talk about you. And you, the young people, especially the, 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 the family of Amoti, please pray for yourself, cry for yourself, not for Amoti. Amoti has rested from pain. The oxygen, the machines, the what, all these things, the vitals, that is gone. She's no longer worried whether you are her raises the taxes or whatever. It doesn't matter where she is. So pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Adjust your mindset in everything. Accept things which come. Don't allow shock to shock you. Let shock shock itself. Praise the Lord. And in a few words, I want to conclude what the John the Revelator says. Time is coming for you and I to face exactly what Amon has faced. In the fourth verse of uh, Revelation 2, 21, he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. And that's what is happening in the life of Amon. But would you want also to find yourself written among the number? There is that song we used to sing. We didn't know, oh Lord, I want to be among the number. We didn't know the words exactly. Oh Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when the saints go marching. Did, did you sing that song? Can we sing just a chorus? Oh, when the saints go marching. When the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be among the number. Oh, when the saints go marching in. When we were young, we had a very good language for another day. You can come and I tell you how we used to sing that song. The words were not clear. We need to know what it meant exactly. Those of you who tried it, you know. Eh? We need to know the words. But know that you need to be among the number. And so now I want to lead us into a prayer. Will you commit your life to God and be among the number of those when the hope grows, when the trumpet sounds, that you be among them. You're not worried about death. When somebody is killing, you're just killing the skin, the flesh, not the soul, not the spirit. Praise the Lord. And those words I pray are mighty as you are walking. Let that be your key banner. All the children and the grandchildren, we want to, to thank you. Yesterday I had all the stories. And I will be glad to see every child have a testimony. That in my marriage, it was just the joy of the Lord. In my life, it was the joy of the Lord. And by the way, I want to ask the church, before I pray, to clap and appreciate Amoti because what you vow <laughs> and so if we are going to believe the one who is the Alpha and the Omega and finish that vow that was made Amoti made a vow with Amoti until death do us part this is where we do it from here and has come to pass I'd like to challenge anyone who is married here to fight and press on until such a day. Doesn't matter, life is not smooth, but he who owns the future, the Alpha and the Omega will make it possible for you. 
When you are reporting, don't report to your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your brother and sister-in-law. Report to God who, whom you made the vow before. Praise the Lord. And you make things happen. But if you go to me and another one and another because we are relatives, we just say you please pack your bags and leave. And you break and you lose this opportunity of what you vowed for. May the Lord bless you. Lord and loving Father, we want to give you thanks and praise for what you have done in the life of Amoti and Amoti and the entire family of the Kadumukasas. We want to thank you for the gift of life, the journey they have walked and the miles and the experiences and memories. There's so many laughters they share, but above all, the vision that was passed in the family of knowing you. And now, as we pray, O Lord, my Father, this morning, we are not praying for a month, but we are praying for these, my brothers and sisters who have gathered here, to be counted among the number. May they find a place in their hearts, each one of them, to be comforted, knowing that there is a time coming when each one of us we will have to go and sleep only to be woken up by the trumpet sound. But how does that happen? With the confidence in us or without confidence? And so I pray that Lord, somebody will receive comfort this morning by accepting you as their Lord and Savior in all things. And so brothers and sisters, if you are here, maybe you have backslidden, maybe you are doubting, maybe one reason or the other has disorganized you. I want to extend an invitation and an opportunity for you to return or to give your life to Christ. And you can pray, pray this prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, forgive us of our wicked ways and wrongful thoughts. Forgive us for the fear, but our lives are in your hands. And now I come, I ask you to accept me as your child and your favorite. That all things of the Spirit may be revealed to me as I walk with you. Comfort me, teach me, rebuke me, but above all, write my name in the book of life. From today way forward, I declare I am yours and I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, all those who have confessed this, I pray that you convict them to continue dwelling in your word day and night, but also to share their testimonies with others. And they will keep coming into your presence, and their light will be brighter and not dimmer for the sake of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I know we are sorrowful, but we can appreciate God for a while. Thank you so much, my Reverend Patrick. Thank you so much. And if you have made that prayer, and you sincerely mean it, it's your first time you have made that prayer, we are available to support you. We are available to work with you because the journey is difficult. It is a difficult journey. You need someone to work with you. But you can be very sure Jesus is right there with you. Amen. And with that, let our light continue to shine before all men that they will see the good things the Lord does and continue praising him. May I invite us to stand and we affirm our faith on page six using the words of the Apostles' Creed while all standing. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is sent to the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
take your seats. We are going to offer, we are going to give an offering. Maybe encourage us to give generously because all that we are going to raise is to support our, our friends, the grieved family. But I warn you that uh, be careful with your belongings. You can be sure that even as we are mourning, there are those who are on duty. So take note that you are aware of your neighbor and be mindful of your property. The choir will be singing as we worship the offering.
colleagues together in support of the funeral arrangement, we ask that you consecrate every um, giving that has come. May you consecrate it, sanctify it with your precious blood, that it will be able to do what you have enabled us to do. Lord King of Glory, we pray that the family will be encouraged and supported in this. To the glory and praise of your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. We will take our seats as I invite the MC to lead us in brief speeches. I think let's give the church a big round of applause.
whom you love most and her. But uh, my letter knew, she said, for me I know I'm not, I'm not among those two. So I'll leave it to you, ma and, uh, and your grandma. It is hard to say, to give, it was hard to give her an answer. But I was so sure the love of this woman, because my mother, that lady there, has loved us a lot and walked with us and taught us well, just like my grandmother here. And uh, there are lessons of life which they will keep telling us is uh, Jesus, God number one. The other lesson of life is to be independent, to stop clinging on to others like I need to work hard instead of relying on my brother. Yes, my brother will always be there to help me. But I have seen it. As much as we are in union, they want you to grow into a man or a lady who can work hard and uh, take care of your family and bring honor to our family. Because honor in the Kadumukasa family is a big deal. So that is what this woman has been to me, an encouragement to study hard because I want to come back and, and show her. You know, I promised her a cow, that one I fulfilled, but I'm not here. I'm sorry I failed to fulfill the house. Mm -hmm. Again, okay, when things have not yet worked out for the house. But it was time, and uh, I thank you. Lastly, Amot, I thank you for waiting for me. I would have broken down. If you had not, you were really a kind woman, even in your death, you know, very thoughtful of me. My grandfather, what you say it? I love you, man. And uh, I thank you. A good example to me. All this life, me personally, you love me and done among all these grandchildren. In the morning, they had to wake up to go and clean and work by the motor because all oh, those two live there. And the motor said it was very easy with me and Dan. Now, today, can I do ya? Eh, beta one, the others, you know, motor leave us with others. Wake up, go, go to chores and what? You'd say we are the ones who were brought up with church, or no church, except down with the thumb. Um, but uh, Amont, you are, you're my good example of what it means to be a man. As I grow older, I realize being a man is not that easy. At yet, being a man is not easy. And I, I see you guys. And I bless God for you, for the love you've shown her. I hope to do the same for my wife and my siblings. God bless you. God bless your mama, Moti. God bless you, my aunties, my uncles, my grandparents, my uncles, my siblings. God bless you. Uh, I pray we, we, we don't swaza her like she always says, mutaswaz. For you who are older, you're already done. You, the back cannot be bent. For the younger ones, my much younger ones, you can do better. Thank you. The speech was long. I, I did not prepare well. It's hard again to speak about her. Um, lastly, thank you all for commemorating and being with us in this trying time. But like the pastor say, we are celebrating. That's why for me, also like I'm encouraged by my sister, I'm not crying because this woman has lived a good life and she has told me well. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you very much. Let's clap for these little ones as they make their way back to their seats. thing I found out is that breastfeeding in this family was a unique activity. 
some of us didn't get a chance to share breastfeeding, but uh, we bless it too. So, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who didn't know, Amoti slept into her death. She slept into her death. And that's the reason I think the grandchildren are very comfortable and confident that she's in a better place. That's why they're very strong. And yesterday we gave them a chance to close for closure. So that's why they spoke openly and we gave them about an hour. So I think you've done very well, well done. Allow me to invite the siblings. The siblings, please come through. I want to remind you also you have six minutes so that we celebrate the church. Thank you. Just my sister, my sisters also say a few words of those six minutes. I don't know when they're over, but good morning, our friends and family that are here with us today. It's very hard to talk about Amoti. Amoti, maybe I can talk to, about her as a sister as a mother, as our ambassador, as a peacemaker, as a warrior, a prayer warrior. Maybe I'll just give a, a short um, description of, which, of what I mentioned. She was a sister. When we were born, um, she was there. When I was born, she was there, and she loved me so much and came like a daughter. And uh, our parents cherished her so much that she was always the one who cleaned their bedroom. And cleaning the bedroom was an advantage because uh, our father liked to have his breakfast in bed, so we had to cut his bread. He liked brown bread with peanut butter. So you had to cut off the edges that were hard. If you clean the bedroom, you ate the, that was your advantage, you ate this. <laughs> so for a long, the longest time, she was the one doing it. And we were very sad that we would, oh, of course she would do me because she loved me very much. And uh, so when we grew up, she kept, for me, she was like my mother. She took that position, I don't know what reason, and my father knew it. 
So when she, the husband worked in the Bogende, they used to take me there. My father would be bringing his car for service in Kampala, and he would bring me to Bogende, to Amoti's house. And uh, on his way back from servicing his car, he would pick me and go together. So Amoti, for me, was a, more of a mother. So when her mother died, she took that position. She was my Sekati Mgode when I was getting married. And uh, we walked the streets of Kampala looking for sh shopping for things I had never gone to a window because I, I, I had just come back. We went to a window together. And then she was a mother to many, as you heard. She breastfed almost everybody, including my sister here. <laughs> And then Amoti was our ambassador. For example, when, we were, when she was in Fukuro and we lost somebody and we were not able to go, she would be the one we sent. Because once she, she was there, she was big enough to represent the whole family. Amoti was a politician. That one, if she was talking here, she would have already gone to Bukwadi, I don't know about Bukwadi, Bukwadi. She loved her people in Bukwadi, and she loved the NRM government. That one was, for sure, I think you've seen her somewhere where she was given a medal. She was a peacemaker. We to make sure that we all kept together. She was always trying to say, please repent. If you have a problem with your brother, you have a problem with your sister, repent and forgive each other. Then uh, she was a prayer warrior. She would call me at 3 o'clock in the night. That was a terrible time. But anyway, she would call me to pray. So we would pray together for the longest time. Her illness, Amoti's illness, I don't think she knew that she had cancer. Because she, her arm was swollen and we had gone to school. Um, that hospital in the town, the one that is uh, of Spedic, is pretty uh, good. Uh, what is it called? Of course. Of course. So we had gone to Kosu because they said she had acute arthritis and she needed to be um, treated. So we went to see the bones doctor again. And when we were there, I looked at her arm and it was swollen. So I said, about why is your arm swollen? I said, I think your watch is too tight to move the watch. And she said, no, this thing started about three days ago. So from course, we went straight to TMI, and uh, they, took, um, they took a sample from her breast, and we knew in February, that she, in February 2022, that she had four, stage four cancer. We went to Nairobi, they checked, and it hadn't spread anywhere. So we were like, praise God, we thank God. And then um, we came back and continued with the um, cancer treatment. Thanks to Margaret, Mrs. Margaret, or Margaret Mugisa. Thank you so much. We got a doctor in Lago. I don't think I should be talking about her health issues, but she's the one who got us a doctor and they started treating her. Dr. Alex, I think. And uh, yeah. Amoti did, did not, at the time of death, her cancer was not really showing a lot, but she got acute malaria. Anyway, that one is for the medical people to talk about. But uh, I'd like now to thank everybody who has been there in her life, especially her friends, her children. The wives of the children, especially the place where the whose home she has been living, the grandchildren, they're all there. The one thing they did that I loved the best was when they called us in the ICU to say that her motor was, uh, had, didn't have long to leave and the machines were probably going to stop. These girls, the children, all came with the. Uh, uh, they sang it is well for her, 
Slowly her heart went down and just stopped. <sighs> anyway, I would like to thank the Akan doctors at the Akan hospital in Nairobi. They are very kind to her and you know, I'm to make friends very easily. So she had a lot of friends in Nairobi as we were going through the treatment. I'd like to thank Dr. Kuku, who we first saw and who sent, who sent us to Nairobi. And then uh, Dr. Sika Sanfu, Dr. Taya, who was the main doctor physician in the Kapala Hospital. I'd like to thank Kapala Hospital team for whatever they did to, to make our life uh, much easier. I'd like to thank my office mates. Thank you. All I see some of you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the support. My office mate who told me, no, don't worry, everything is going to be all right. She will not die. She died, but she didn't die because she went to heaven. Yeah. Thank you very much. Then uh, I have my Gayaza. 1967. Here, I see Veronica here. Thank you so much. I like to thank the Amund Michael, the husband. Amund Michael, you gave us a very comfortable life, especially in her illness. You were there. Amund Michael is a very funny, very quiet, but very funny. I'm going to, again, I'm going to ask you if I can say one of the things that you said to me. So I call a motive. They were phone call. I said, I'm going to go to the room. Hey, I'm going to go to the room. I'm going to go to the room. How can you afford your trousers to go and do your talk? Do you need to do your talk with your legs? So in the matter, you need to do your talk your legs. But he kept us laughing through all this. Thank you so much. Now I think I've been a bit selfish. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kokuza, we thank you to come and stand with us in this very hard time. Um, like, like everybody has seen, I'm the last born of this family, the Kakiza, and I always get leftovers. So, everybody has taken uh, the time that they gave us. But me, I'll just tell you, if you look in that order of service, you'll see two babies in that picture. The ugly one was me. The, the beautiful one was Melinda Karungi's mother. So, at that time, uh, she was, uh, Amoti had to, was breastfeeding again. And because I was, I loved milk a lot, that actually they nicknamed me, my brother Kaita nicknamed me, Omsuma Wamata. So uh, Amoti also breastfed me at the same time with, uh, with uh, her daughter, Melinda Karungi's mother was called Gladys also. So for me, Amoti is not just a sister, equally I was a daughter. And all I can say is thank you for being with us and may Amoti so rest in peace. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mugamba, my boss, for the, uh, the envelope that you gave me. Unfortunately, I didn't see any writing in it, so I can't read the message from my office mates. Thank you very much. Let's clap for the siblings. I told you this family and breastfeeding. We have cousins, aunties using the same avenue to breastfeed. But anyway, I'm lucky I'm not one of them because I can't call my cousin my sister. How is that possible? Oh, sorry, my, 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 my niece, my sister. It's happening here. Anyway, so without too much, uh, without wasting too much time, allow me to invite the children. Children, please come and give us your remarks. You have exactly five and a half minutes. Thirty seconds are consumed by the siblings, so let's try and get this snappy. Uh, 
Nyo ni kwa kubaza Aurori Beltoro Ama baragange mba nyataka Atwiri Benezeri James Mwikere ni mkura Mwili yomu na gamba moti Hakuonka hivereli Kionka nyo wa moti mchamsanju O wa moti mwonaliaga Ichamsanju Ni nisaba mwotele ngari za maani Diari dimu za li sahi kumena hiviri Uwire mwumbwa sile Amote na amote yonu Enzuro vya kire Baka anda vya mkivira bandi basa paka muka Amote ya vya mzaini Kiyoka kansaba umkasumi kakana Nzine kizine kia li achas ingire yu kubonza Ni nisaba tukizene hapa Nikizene achatu msi na mkama Tumsi na mkama Murundi Engozi Zetizi Wao Tumsi Na mkama Murundi Engozi Zetizi Wao Tumsi Na mkama Murundi
So many will testify. If, if she was to give you a gift, she would give a Bible and put some verses. But she would also again surprise you. She will have to give you money. How she used to get her money, I will not, I will not say. In so many ways, she was a very good mobilizer. So not only giving us, but she was fronting so much church. Church, church, church. Uh, actually, even when she was bedridden, I remember her calling me, mobilizing for 400,000. Then I asked her, what? Money for what? Then she told me, no, I want the money. And then when she wants the money, she wants it. She must go for it. And she knows you provide. So, and I don't know why he had asked me who was away, but um, what she told me that uh, there, was, uh, there was a group of vulnerable people back in Kwari, and um, she had sent that money, and I followed through to see, and um, indeed, that money uh, reached uh, the, the, uh, the beneficiaries. So you can see the big heart she had as a mother. So we want to thank God for our life, uh, we want to thank God for uh, making us uh, be what we are because of our hustle and indeed a motive from Saviour. Uh, I want to wind up by thanking everyone. My aunt Sam uh, mentioned the medical part, one thank the government, one thank the church, Church of Uganda, in all branches. Kampala and back uh, in Kokoto. We want to thank our family for being together because we've been together uh, since she uh, started becoming weak from the, the COVID period up to when uh, she has gone to be with the Lord. So we want to thank friends, we want to thank in those all the relatives and everyone who has supported us as a family. Uh, Reverend, I want to assure you that uh, uh, the family of Aboti will always remain open. You don't need an appointment. So please, uh, with that, uh, I want to request that uh, as we move to Fort Porto, those who are willing to go with us, May the God be with you, have mercy, and judges, and as we uh, said of our mother, one thank you, thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. I think let's give a round of applause. Good morning. Uh, this is a motto speech. The clergy, my 
in-laws and my family, our children and our friends. God is good. And all the time. I have many reasons to thank our Lord, including today when we bring our lovely wife, my lovely wife, to celebrate her life here in church. What else should I do other than thank the Lord? I also thank God who has brought you safely and you have been with us to comfort and condole with us. You have shown us great love. My family and I are sincerely indebted. My wife Amoti went to be with the Lord on the 11th of April 2024. It was a Thursday evening at about 9 p.m. at Kampala Hospital in Colorado. She has been in and out of hospital, but she had spent her last seven days or so on life support. She didn't wake up from her coma. God spared her the pain in her last days. Her mother has been battling with a number of ailments high blood pressure, diabetes, even COVID-19. But the biggest battle was with cancer for the last for the period of over two years. Amot was a fighter. She has really been a strong woman. She was satisfied that she has accessed whatever medicine was possible, whichever hospital was available, in and out of Uganda. Most important, she was very satisfied that she was not only loved, but she was shown the love. And what was born in 1945, she went to school. Although she didn't go far in academics, she was blessed with a high level of intelligence and a lot of wisdom. She was a very good planner, she, was a, she had a firm character and she would give advice to professors and high level, high level members of society. She was blessed. We got married in 1966. That gave us 58 years of marriage. A marriage that I have nothing to regret about. God gave us nine children, four of whom are going to be with the Lord. We have also been blessed with 19 grandchildren and 10 great-grandchildren. We also have numerous children whom we have adopted and have been part of our family. You will probably see them when we reach quarry. That's why I told you that I have many reasons to be grateful to God. In the 58 years with Amorti, she has been a true friend, a reliable confidant an advisor. She loved me in good times and in the bad times, in my strengths and in my weaknesses. I really have no grudges with her. I can only thank the Lord who kept us together. I want to thank the church, not only those who have led us this morning, but those who have moved with us the journey. We thank you. I thank our children and our grandchildren. I can't start naming one or two. All of you have been amazing. You have loved and wanted. However, there are those who kept on her bedside throughout. I dear Bridget Mafabi, I worry Mrs. Kantinti, Mrs. Melinda Tibet, plus Grace, who was a caretaker. We thank you. We also thank Wesley, who was our ambulance driver. He was there to take our mother to hospital anytime, every time. And I sincerely thank you. Similarly, I thank our in laws, Andrew Mafabi and Samuel Atbet, who allowed their wives to come and stay with their mother on her bedside for such a long time. They turned into babysitters and, the, and chefs of their homes. That sacrifice cannot be taken for granted. Some men would have taken offense. We thank you. 
I thank my heroes, the siblings of Amoti. They have loved and cared for their sister. We sincerely thank you. However, I want to single out our dear Mrs. Kawaza and our boy Mrs. Mato. You have been, you have truly been there for Amoti. God bless you. I also thank the children of my heroes. You have also shown support to your auntie. My siblings, my family, have been there for us and I sincerely thank the children of my siblings. You have loved us, you have supported us. May God bless you. I thank our friends, but more so the friends of our children. They have been and have kept like family. I pray that you continue to be in this, this loving to us. Some of you checked on us almost every single day. I thank you sincerely. I thank the doctors and the nurses. They turned from doctors, from health workers, to friends, and they treated us like family. We, we, may God bless you. The burial arrangements will be shared in detail. However, in summary, we are traveling to Fort Porter today. We shall have a church service tomorrow, and we shall have a burial on Wednesday in Kwari. I invite you and encourage you to join us and condole with us. Let us complete this celebration of Amoti's life together. I wish you a safe journey and I thank you all for being there for us. May God bless you. I think let's clap for Amoti. So mine, to conclude the part of uh, the program, is to give you a tentative program on how we are going to move from now. So right about after church, we will set off for Fort Porto, to our home in Bukwali, and then tomorrow we will have a church service starting at 2.30 at St. John's Cathedral, Kawarole. Thereafter, we'll have a vigil at the house, at the home, sorry, I was reminded, in Bukwali. And then on Wednesday, we'll bury and send a motor to our final resting place at 11 a.m. I thank you all for coming and joining the family in this time of trial. And we look forward to seeing you as we send out to our final resting place. Thank you very much. Allow me to hand over to the church. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, it sounds that I'm glad. Thank you. Let me ask the choir to read us in a song one stanza of Ruhango Sobozi. It's on page four. One stanza and we'll close in prayer. long enough.
6, we can go together in that great prayer. You Christ, and uphold the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at the right hand of God in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Go to meet the price of your own blood and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Amen. Let's continue to pray. Lord God Almighty, we praise you for this time that you have given us to celebrate the life of Amorti Gladys Knight Kadumukasa. We praise you for the amazing love that you, Lord, filled her with, that, Lord, she did not only breastfeed her own children, but breastfeed siblings, breastfeed, breastfeed grandchildren. We thank you, Lord, for the love and selflessness that you gave unto her. We thank you, Lord, for her various gifts that, Lord, you gave her to serve family and community. We thank you, Lord, for the way you used her, Lord, as a politician, as a mother, as a wife, as a sibling, as, Lord, Mkaikuru uh, in the community. We thank you, Lord, for her love for you, for her love for your church, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the way that she has served you, O oh Lord. And even as has been testified here, Lord, we know that she rests in glory. She rests in peace. Uh, with you and Lord. We are left with the hope that we one day will also enjoy the pleasure of meeting her again and being in your presence forever. And Lord, now we know this time is more important for us all. We pray that, Father, your comfort will be upon the family. Let your comfort be upon a body. Let your comfort be upon the siblings, the children, the grandchildren, the great grandchildren, the friends, uh, the people of Bukwali, the people of Timbeja, the people at St. John's Cabarole, the people, Lord, that have been the constituency that she has been leading in Bukwali in the, amongst the elderly in Fort Porto Tourism City. We pray, O oh Lord, that you strengthen this dear family, strengthen the friends, and show yourself strong. As has been wished, Lord, we pray also that, Lord, you protect each one as they travel to Kuali uh, and prepare to lay her body to rest on, um, on uh, and Wednesday, Lord. We praise you, O oh Father, that you have conquered death through Jesus Christ, and even Amorti has conquered death through Jesus Christ. I pray that as we grieve, as we send her off, Lord, that we shall mourn as those who have hope, O oh Lord. We thank you for your presence, very strongly felt in this place, and we pray that your presence continue to go with us as we lay our morty to her final resting place. We thank you for hearing us. We thank you for answering us. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, beloved, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. God, your hearts and your mind in the knowledge of God of the love of his son Jesus Christ the blessing of God Almighty go with you be with you take you safely and return you safely that blessing never depart from you now and always Amen, Amen. we have come to the end of our service but let me just give a minute to the MC for direction to where we are going So uh, from here, like I said earlier, we will head to Bukwali for Porto. As you approach uh, Panga Market, just below these uh, gardens, gardens is a public, is a quite very from, uh, famous restaurant. Just right the opposite gardens, you take a left and then follow that road until you find a token by the roadside which will direct you to the house. We thank you once again and we look forward to you being with us during this time. Thank you. I'm being reminded that um, Amoti, is, Amoti will be lying in church in Bokwali, uh, St. Andrews, if I'm right. 
So that's where she'll be in line the whole night before we move out to church tomorrow at St. John's Cathedral in Tavarok. We thank you once again and say journey masses. And our request is made that we kindly of leave behind the order of service booklets because they will be used at the general service in Fort Porto. Let me ask the family representative to receive. We have together collected 2,652,100 shillings and $12. Thank you all for giving. Please uh, receive this on behalf of the cathedral. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, choir. Thank you, uh, Reverend Patrick. Thank you, Brother Reverend Alan. Thank you, each one of you. May the Lord continue comforting you and more. the Lord go with you and the entire family and keep you strong. We keep you in the prayer. Let me invite us to stand as we sing our concluding song. <laughs>